वेलकम फ्रेंड्स इन लास्ट फ्यू सेशंस वी आर डिस्कसिंग अबाउट द टेक्नोलॉजिकल इनोवेशन प्रोसेस एंड इन अवर लास्ट सेशन वी डिस्कस्ड अबाउट द प्लानिंग फॉर टेक्नोलॉजिकल इनोवेशन एंड इन द प्लानिंग प्रोसेस एज वी नो दैट प्लानिंग इज डन फॉर द फ्यूचर पीरियड प्लानिंग इज टेकिंग डिसीजन इन एडवांस दैट वॉट वी नीड टू डू in the future and therefore in literature planning is known as future course of action now with respect to planning the other important term is strategy when we talk of long term planning the strategy is related to that long term planning the genesis of this word strategy is from military science where we see that how we are going to position our army or our resources with respect to enemy's army in the battlefield so that we can achieve the target now this word is more popular in business environment and therefore in this session we are going to discuss about various strategies related to technological innovation management and now to discuss this process of uh, strategies or the different types of strategies which are applicable in technological innovation management program let us go back to the discussion of popular s curve of technology life cycle now as we have already discussed about product life cycle in one of our previous session and in our last session we discussed about s curve of technology life cycle almost both these curves both these cycles are similar to some extent because these are similar in the phases of their lives in product life cycle also we have four phases and in this s curve also we have four phases now as this diagram shows that you have emerging technology that is the first phase where the performance of that technology is very very low the performance index the capability of the technology is not very high and the technology is in very initial stage where lot of r&d is also going on lot of iteration with respect to that technology is going on then when the r&d is successful we are able to develop good capabilities we are able to get higher performance from that technology then technology goes into this growth stage where with less efforts with uh, considerable less time with less investment you get a rapid adoption of the technology so the performance index also increases and people also start adopting the technology and then after some time technology goes for the maturity the meaning is that the performance of the technology or performance of the products based on that technology cannot go beyond a particular benchmark beyond a particular level of capabilities and that is the meaning of maturity of technology that you are achieving the maximum possible performance from that technology and further increase in performance is not possible however efforts however investment however uh, uh, cost you put into that technology and because of that the next stage is the decline because at this time some new technology will start emerging and then that new technology will take the space created by this previous technology and it is always understood and we will discuss in our further sessions also that the new technologies 
are always considered to be superior technologies. Only those technologies are going to survive. If a new technology is not superior, then that technology will not survive, that technology will not exist, that technology will not create innovation. So, for creating impact, the new technology, the successive technologies need to have superior performance and that way from our wired com communication, the telephone of Graham Bell to this mobile phone, the technology has moved in the superiority direction and therefore, the concept of technology innovation management strategy becomes important that how are you going to manage the innovation through technological innovation and what are the different types of strategy. So, the first important thing that we understood that there are these different stages in a technology life cycle where you get very little improvement in performance, then you get very good result in the performance, very good capability of those products which are based on that technology. For an example, if I talk of renewable energy, so all around the world we are so much concerned about energy solutions and when we talk of energy solutions, we are continuously thinking that we need to move from fossil fuel based energy solutions to renewable, uh, renewable sources of energy and therefore, other terms like green energy, sustainable energy, environmental friendly energy, these terms are also coming into picture. Now, initially when we are talking of green solutions, green products, people were not very interested to buy those green products, why? The performance of the green products was not up to the standard. The products like uh, your normal car which is running on gasoline, the mileage is a different phenomena, but the speed, the capacity which pro it provides that was not possible with a car which is running on battery electric car. So, the adoption of electric car was initially low because of the low performance of those products, but with more and more efforts we are trying to improve the performance of those types of products and therefore, now we are seeing rapid adoption of electric cars. People are thinking that they should have electric cars which are considered now with better performance, with better capabilities and these are the case of electric vehicles. Similarly, you will see that in many other products when you have initially some kind of hitch then the adoption then the performance because adoption is directly related to performance. So, if performance is not up to the mark adoption will also be low and when performance improves the adoption will automatically be increased. So, that is about the technology life cycle. Now, based on these things we have these different types of technologies, base technologies, key technologies, pacing technologies and emerging technologies. Now, for understanding that uh, what are these different types of uh, technologies, we can take the help of uh, the previous diagram, where we have these four different phases and then slightly decline. Now, the base technologies are normally related to this part of S curve, these are base technologies. Now, base technologies are those technologies which are in the emerging area, which are now you need to see that uh, 
information technology that is a base technology because around that base technology you are having so many other applications so many other products which are coming around that base technology then you have key technologies in key technologies those technologies which are going to be the future like uh, take an example of artificial intelligence so there is going to be a very rapid increase in the field of artificial intelligence everywhere whether it is medical science whether it is your classroom studies whether it is your communication whether it is your energy solutions everywhere we find use of artificial intelligence iot that is again going to be a key technology for future so some of the technologies which are going to be the important source for our future development these are labeled as key technology where we find that growth is going to be there in future the pacing technology where we find that yes these technologies are achieving a level of maturity and uh, these technologies are going to help you because most of these technologies are relatively stable they are achieved a level of saturation these technologies have achieved the maximum possible level of performance output so these are the pacing technology and uh, you will find that uh, some of the pacing technologies right you have achieved in some cases where you are not finding <coughs> any new innovation in that particular area and those are the examples of uh, pacing technologies where things are relatively stable and uh, those things are the part of uh, pacing technology earlier we used to have like uh, earlier we used to think that uh, new inventions are not possible and if you know the story that uh, around 1900 times after uh, some of the initial discoveries in usa there was a proposal to close the patent office because people thought that now we have discovered everything and new discoveries are not possible but uh, there were other views also those who believed that new discoveries are never ending process because you will have new challenges and new challenges will result into new solutions so pacing technologies what we want to say that these are temporary type of maturity periods in the life of any technology there will come a relatively uh, stable period where further improvement is not possible but uh, then we have already discussed in our previous session that you have micro radical type of uh, innovations where you move or generational improvements where you move from 2g to 3g to 3g to 4g where you move from iphone 4 to iphone 5 to iphone 6 or iphone 7 and these type of changes keep happening so pacing technology is a relatively uh, that technology where for some time we do not find new innovations like for an example for more than 100 years if you go to the story of kodak for more than 100 years uh, they were the king of uh, photography business but when the digital photography came into market they because they were ruling the market of uh, film based real based photography but when digital photography came as a new era in the photography business so kodak lost that kingdom kodak was dethroned by companies like sony canon and nikon 
because of their non ability to move into emerging technology from the pacing technology. Because emerging technology comes after the decline, when your pacing technology is reaching the decline phase, then you need to think that how to start a new technology. So, the photography based on photography films or reel based photography to digital photography at that time this digital photography used to be a emerging technology area rather if you read the story of Kodak you will realize that Kodak was one of the first company which invented digital SLR, but they thought that we have invested so much in the real based photography. So, let us not bring this product of digital camera and we work on this real based photography, but they did not realize that this digital photography is the emerging technology and then you need to see that you need to bring this uh, emerging technology back into the base technology and then this whole cycle will start again. Emerging technology will become the base technology, digital photography, the optical imaging, electronic optical imaging and then based on that electronic optical imaging you will have key technology and then you go for the pacing technology. So, these are four different types of technologies classification based on our S curve. Now, when we are looking for a strategy, what type of strategy is suitable for me with respect to technological innovation? We need to see very classical approach whenever we go for a planning class or a strategy class that is the SWOT analysis, a strength, weakness, opportunity and threat and in the dictionary of technology management we call this as technology audit. So, we are going to discuss that strength weakness opportunity thread you have strength you have weakness opportunities and threats. So, because of your competence because of your special skills your knowledge your skills these things give you strength non possession of knowledge non possession of skills lack of resources that is the reason of your weakness opportunities you see some kind of trend which is favoring your knowledge and skills. So, those are opportunities for you. You see some trend which is not matching your resources, trend is something, but you do not possess that resource, then that trend is threat to you. Your competitors they are threat to you because competitors may possess some better knowledge, some better skills, some better expertise, some better tools, techniques, human resource, but you are not. So, therefore, these things become your threat. So, you need to see what is your current core technologies, products, market and competition. When you see that all four elements in a holistic manner then it becomes your SWOT analysis and which we also say as technology audit. So, before we start to know that which strategy is suitable to me we need to go for this type of SWOT analysis and then we also need to do a SWOT analysis for future same thing we do for future that 
if we develop these strength. So, if I convert my weaknesses into strengths, so can these threats will become my opportunity that is the future sort analysis. Because once I do my present sort analysis what I possess today and on the basis of that I know that these are the potential threats. Now, I will like to overcome those weaknesses threats are there because of weaknesses. So, I will like to overcome my weaknesses by a very systematic planning activity. I will take help of mentors, I will take help of other seniors in my field and with the abilities which I will develop systematically over a period of time, I will like to convert my weaknesses into my strengths and I expect that this conversion should help me in making my threats opportunities. So, this way I will look for a future sort analysis also that if I convert these weaknesses into strengths so whether my threats will be converted into opportunities or not. Now, on the basis of this discussion you have one first important characteristic of technology strategies which is on the basis of timing. So, now what is it on the basis of timing you have two things one is continuum approach and another is discrete approach. You can have technology strategy which is not like discrete approaches these are the different strategies taken over a period of time rather discrete approaches which are done at different points of time. So, these are the discrete type of strategies and then you have this that your strategy execution starts and this itself is an its strategy as you are moving from period A to period B. So, this is the continuum approach. So, technology strategies are normally the continuum based strategies rather discrete strategies because you follow S curve and it is initially the base strategy then it becomes the key strategy then it becomes the pacing strategy same strategy and therefore, it is like a continuum approach. And it is also possible that at the same time at the same time in the organization you have at the same time you have two three strategies running at different stages. One strategy is in the key role another strategy in the emerging role another strategy in the pacing role. So, more than one strategy may be available simultaneously in your organization. So, that is also because uh, the strategy of technology is normally with respect to products. So, your organization may be offering different types of products. So, when you are offering different types of products, so different products may have different type of strategy. So, at the same time you may have more than one technology strategy. Now, let us quickly see some of the possible strategies which we follow in the technology management. One is the offensive strategy offensive strategy is like <coughs> first mover strategy the leadership strategy and it is very important to note that the offensive strategy is normally initiates a new industry life cycle. It is not limited to your company it is not limited to your organization rather it starts an entirely new industry 
and some of the example of uh, this offensive strategy which companies have followed like IBM, Texas Instruments, DuPont in the chemical engineering, in the area of semiconductors, in the area of computing solutions. So, these are those companies which have initiated an entirely new industry life cycle and if I want to add Indian example into this list. So, I can say that Patanjali to some extent is an example of offensive strategy because of our mindset we were shifting from Ayurvedic system or indigenous system of treatment to allopathic system of treatment. We were moving from naturopathic system of treatment to allopathic system of treatment. So, the industry related to naturopathy, industry related to Ayurvedic medicines were in the dying stage, but because of offensive strategy of Patanjali which is less technology and more marketing related strategy. The revival of entire naturopathic and Ayurvedic medicine industry took place. So, that is to some extent an example of offensive strategy. So, you become the not only the leader in your company, but you start one entirely new industry life cycle. Then obviously, this one is the leader. So, rest all are followers and that is defensive strategy. So, you have the first mover they are the leaders and rest all are follower. So, when you are not very sure that should I be the torch bearer, should I be the flag bearer in that case we go with the follower strategy where we follow the leader and uh, once a company is established then you find that large number of followers also start acting like the leader. So, that is relatively safer strategy. Then you have counter offensive strategy this is also very interesting. Now, you have one leader, this leader is offering offensive strategy and there are large number of followers, they all are following the defensive strategy. Now, to counter this leader, another firm comes with a new kind of technological innovation. So, we require them also and that is counter offensive strategy which deals with this offensive strategy. So, to have a different type of uh, leadership that is known as counter offensive strategy. So, if in the governance structure we take some example which is not related to technology. If, uh, in the governance structure you have like in India we say that uh, there are right wing people and there are left wing people and there are many followers of right wing people and there are many followers of left wing people. Now, we can understand that to counter the right wing leaders there is counter offensive strategy offered by left wing leaders. So, that is the meaning of counter the leadership effect. Then another is imitative strategy. Now, the imitative strategy is uh, not very research intensive, this R stands for research. So, this imitative strategy is not very research in intensive and what we do in this case, these companies are development design production and service engineering intensive. So, somebody else does the research and they use that research 
in developing the design production and service activities. Those who know about ISO systems they know that what is the scope of such companies to get an ISO certificate and in our forum we can discuss this aspect because this will take somewhere else our discussion. So, we will not discuss this here, but certainly we can have large number of companies which are not research oriented, but they develop products, they develop different types of service activities, they perform service activities. So, they have a limited scope, these are imitative strategy. Then applications engineering, there are large number of companies with respect to technology strategy, they focus on design and development only. So, you have a large number of examples which are particularly related to mobile apps. So, these companies focus on you have on your smartphone large number of applications in play stores and uh, these companies who develop those applications different types of applications may be related to your uh, exercise, uh, may be related to entertainment, may be related to education, may be related to fashion, may be related to games. So, these companies focus only on design and development. So, they are not into the core technology development, they only the technology of coding, the android coding that is already developed. So, they develop the application based on those platforms. So, that is one type of technology and you see the use of this type of application engineering is continuously on rise and large number of companies are coming up which are developing products based on some technology. So, this is very very important for new startups that uh, how you can use it is not necessary always to develop a technology from scratch. You have some technology developed and now as an entrepreneur I am focusing only on design and development I am using that technology for specific applications. Then we have dependent strategies which is known as branch plant policy and it focuses only on production and marketing. Like uh, you see many Japanese organizations in India, they have this type of dependent strategy. The technology is coming from the parent company of Japan and in India their plants are only responsible for production and marketing. So, that type of strategy is also possible. This is a kind of SBU, Indian company, Indian plant is an SBU, a strategic business unit. So, they are again not research in intensive, they take the technology from the parent company and their focus is only on production and marketing. And then you have another type of technology strategy that is absorbent strategy and this absorbent strategy which is normally having a truncated technology base means again you are not very research intensive and you acquires a license from an offensive defensive innovator whether it is offensive innovator or it can be a defensive innovator to exploit that innovation to exploit that technology in your domestic market. So, it is a kind of some kind of licensing system that uh, you are an American company, I am an Indian company. So, I take license from you to use your innovation in my domestic market that is absorbent strategy and for that as per our mutual agreement I may pay you something. So, that is how I take advantage of my innovation in different parts of the world by following the absorbent strategies 
in different parts. So, these are the different types of technology innovation strategies which are possible and depending upon nature of my organization, size of my organization, size of my market, I choose a particular type of technology strategy for my organization. But my take is that right now most of the products are developed around mobile application and in that case application strategy is the most suitable strategy where we are not working to develop a new technology rather we work more closely to understand our customer technology is already there and on the basis of that technology we design and develop mobile apps for various requirements. So, that is the most popular strategy at the moment and uh, big companies they are the trend setters like we discussed the example of uh, Texas Instruments, IBM, DuPont etcetera they follow offensive strategy then there are defensive strategy then there are absorbent strategy and there are application strategies. So, with this we come to end of this session thank you very much.